the Sonic High School Sports Blast, your weekly look at high school sports in the Mid-South. This week's show is brought to you by Sonic. By SKB Facilities and Maintenance. We take pride in our work. You will take pride in our results. All-American Sports, your team sports headquarters. By Delta Technical College, hands-on, take off. And by A Step Ahead. Hi, how are you? Doc Holliday. She's Jessica Benson. Welcome to another edition of the Sonic High School Sports Blast. Another great week of high school football played by some great programs and some great players. And week four giving us one of the most anticipated matchups of the season in Memphis. Maybe even the best matchup in the entire state of Tennessee. We will get to that in just a moment. But first, let's look at what we have for you on today's show. We will have the highlights from all of the biggest games this week. Plus, we go out to Germantown High School for our Scholar Athlete of the Week. And Doc has a special roundtable talk. How special is it? It's extremely special. Got a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of successful guys. Sweet. And you know what? We're going to start this show with some successful programs. Our game of the week, and this week's game of the week, truly a big boy matchup. Perennial powerhouse, undefeated Whitehaven, facing off with perennial powerhouse, undefeated Lausanne. Lausanne ranked first in the state in Division II AA. Whitehaven ranked second in the state in 6A. As for playoff implications, this game means Nothing for either team, public versus private. But as for region bragging rights, we go to Clayton Collier with our Family Leisure Game of the Week. Doc, Jessica, this one had Game of the Week written all over it. On one side, you have a Lausanne team that hasn't lost since 2015, and on the other, a Whitehaven squad that's a year removed from an 18-game win streak of their own. A streak, by the way, the Lynx ended when they met last season. Lausanne going for 30 in a row against a Whitehaven team eyeing revenge from last year's loss. Lynx were up 13 to 7. Eric Gray already with a touchdown, and he's got another. The Michigan commit jukes him out all the way to the end zone. Lausanne in front 20 to 7, but Cameron Sneed responded with a score of his own, and then Vincent Guy finds him for the short pass, and the Lynx secondary doesn't have a chance. His second of the game, this one 60 yards, but a missed PAT keeps this one tied. There's a minute to go. Lausanne has it at the seven. Gray with the ball, but somehow it comes loose. Now Whitehaven will recover, and we have overtime. Tigers try first. They would settle for a field goal. However, Eric Gray, he's not settling for nothing. Ball game. Lausanne keeps it rolling and makes it 30 wins in a row. Lynx take it in overtime, 26 to 23. Really pleased the way our guys persevered. We had a lot of guys that played a lot of minutes tonight on both sides of the football. A lot of guys cramping, uh, a lot of guys in pain, but they fought through it. They did a great job. It's a great football game, but as we said all week, man, you can't hurt yourself. Extra points. We make the extra point, the game is over. So our job is to make sure we're executing. If we execute and get the extra point, the game is over. So head goes off to them for fighting and making a play. I feel great to get in that end zone, man. Fumbling on the goal line, I felt like I let my team down. I had to go win it for them. It's a, just great. I'm feeling great right now. It's time to go win the state championship now. Go undefeated again, win the state championship. That's all they got to say. That's it. And for the second year in a row, Eric Gray has the game winner against the Tigers. One of three scores and 171 yards for the senior. As for 30 wins in a row, Coach LeCastro simply put it, it's one closer to 31. That's going to do it for our Game of the Week here at Rhodes College. Doc, Jessica, back to you. That was a good one. That's Central made the right up to a great start as Warriors head coach. Central 2-0 coming into this week's game against Mitchell. Early on, Mitchell up 7-0. Not anymore. Central running back Allen Thornton. 36 yards later, he's in the place of points. Game tied at 7 apiece. And how about this highlight? It's not a highlight, but it is a highlight because it's such a beautiful catch by Yuri Jermison. Out of bounds, Cameron Griffin. Beautiful coverage. This is beautiful as well. Central's Lorenzo Towns Jr. takes it, tiptoes up the sideline. 32 yards later, he gets the touchdown. Central up 27. They roll 49 to 7 is the final. The Germantown Red Devils sporting an undefeated record. They travel to 2 and 1. Collierville taking on the Dragons. Germantown running back Bernard Gardner gets the scoring going. Three yard touchdown run. Red Devils up 7 0 in the first. Germantown running back Bernard Gardner. Keeps the scoring going. One yard touchdown run. Germantown up 21 2 in the second. Germantown running back Shamar Michael. More scoring going. One yard touchdown run. Germantown up 28 2 in the second. Red Devils remain undefeated. Roll 42 2. At Houston, the Mustangs welcoming Bolton to campus. Houston says, Welcome to this. Our push ups. 
How about this? Pass up. Ethan Burns hits Grayson. Hit, hit. Is going to get it. Cut that. He's nice. Tuster. Houston up 21 0 in the third. Then Bolton. Get a little tricker. Pitch. He's going to pass. Nope. He gets crushed. Scoop and score off the bounce. Scoop and score. He scoops and scores. That's another touchdown. Houston goes up 28 0. Houston wins this ball game going away. 41 0 is your final. The Arlington Tigers coming off their first loss of the season last week was also their first time being held to less than 40 points and their first time not seeing senior running back Kenny Walker score at least five touchdowns. Arlington visiting Southwind this week and the Jags about to get a hard, cold look at the Kenny Walker reality. The return game. Tiger QB Rhodes Carson to Kenny Walker. Rinse, wash, end zone, drippy. That's what he does. Arlington ties the game at 7 all in the second half. Now, Southwind would answer right back with their main dude, Steve Guy, looking very much like the guy. With this nice touchdown run, would give the Jags a 14-10 lead in the third quarter. But back to Kenny Walker. Walker with three touchdowns on the night. In the words of Twitter, a bunch of yards. Zach Mack, Arlington wins 33-20. At FACS, the Crusaders welcoming in Munford. The Cougars up 14 to 7. FACS kicking off to start the second half. Number two going to field it. We don't have his name, but he is speedy and he is shifty. And he's going to go 60 big yards before he gets kablam. Huge hit by Josh Farner there. But Munford able to capitalize on the drive. They're going to give it to their big back and he pushes it in to put the Cougars up. 20 to 7. FACS defense clamped down from there, but their offense just couldn't get anything rolling as Mumford wins this one 20 to 7. Now a loss Kirby nor Olive Branch had known before this week. The Cougars were 3 0, and so were the Conquistadors. Conquistadors rolling. Cole Catalyst gives it to Dakota Braswell. Braswell does the rest, putting them up, putting them down. Drug down from behind, short of the goal line, but they make it count. Gary Banks, the second, gets it in for the touchdown. Olive Branch rolling. Olive Branch rolling even more. Radlich. Catlich goes up top. Hunter Riley, beautiful reception. Conquistadors win 42 to 21. The Ridgeway Roadrunners still looking for their first win of the season, taking on Pulaski Friday night. It did not start well for the Roadrunners. Pulaski's Isarius Wood sneak attack into the end zone. Ridgeway would trail 49 to 14 at halftime, and it looked a lot like this play for Ridgeway. Like the tackle was there, but it somehow not. Ridgeway still with a very solid second half effort, but Pulaski still wins this one, 56 to 35. Another team looking for its first win: the White Station Spartans, where they have better luck welcoming in Fernando Tiger. Has opened up hot Ladarian Dart and looking like a 40-yard dash for the first score of the game. The Spartans would answer right back at you. Eli Neal going to keep it, going to tie it up at seven. Neal with three scores on the night, including the game winner with less than a minute to play as the Spartans get win number one, 31 to 28, the final. Nice little block. You know, we got a lot of another block. Oh, but another block because right now, timeout when time is back in, like I said, we have more football. And we meet this week's SKD Scholar Athlete of the Week.